Once you complete step one, your file should look something like this. Now I'm looking at the results file, which has all of the steps nicely organized into layer groups. Um, and what you should be doing next would be uh, completing step two and step three. So I want to just show how I would arrive at steps two and three. And I'm just using the results files uh, for my own self as a guide just to make sure I remember to show you everything that I wanted to demonstrate. The difference between step one and step two um, is basically just uh, a different photo that's being framed uh, with the little uh, crop, I guess, uh, icon there. Um, and it's, you know, uh, the crop is basically moved up a little bit and the, um, the nav here is higher and instead of use, the uh, button is make. So it's, very, it's a very minor sort of modification and what I would do to make that happen, and I'm just going to look inside step one. Now inside step one, we have the graduation image at the back, but we do not have the beach image, okay, which I'm not sure I have in mind. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it on in. Now, in addition to that, I would click and drag my step one layer group to the make a new layer icon and make a copy of it. Alternatively, I could use my side menu here and I could duplicate my group. Either way is fine. And I would name this step two. Since I already have a step two, I'm just going to call this step two uh, new. And I'll move the beach runner image into that folder. And I'll just turn off graduation or hide graduation and let the beach runner image show, probably for sake of being organized, so go ahead and give that a name as well. So that's the first part, just just um, putting Beach Runner into that folder, turning, uh, disabling the eyeball for the graduation layer, enabling the, the eyeball for Beach Runner, making sure it's all the way at the bottom of the stacking order. Um, that, will, that will give you a good start. Then we're going to take the um, highlight in the crop area, right, these are the two pieces that basically make that crop icon, and if I turn the eyeballs off, I can I can just assure myself of that. So I'll hold the shift key to select both of those layers and then use my move tool and just click and drag and again I'm going to hold the shift key to just move it straight up to some place around here or so. You don't have to be too precise. This is just for practice but something like this is approximately the right position. Then I also want to take um, uh, pretty much everything else. The camera roll, the button, the word use, the UI for the role, uh, and the, the type. I want to take all of that stuff and also move that up. I want that to be up here. So again with the move tool, holding the shift key to move it in a straight line. Again I use the shift key to select multiple layers. Lastly I'll just change the word use to the word make. And on the use type layer, if I just double click right on the T, the icon for the type layer, that will select um, everything that is typed onto that layer. And so I can just type right on top of use the word make. And um, fortunately that also fits into the same area that I allocated for my button. So that pretty much wraps up my step two. Now step three, um, in step three I have the two images. I have crop guides for both of them and I have a new icon called blend which is a circle with a dashed line and then a little flag at the end that says blend. So again I'll start by duplicating my step two, maybe I'll do it this time from the side pull down menu, duplicate group, I'll just call it step three anew. And here, I'll start by just working with those background images. Notice that they're, they're a bit washed out. So I'm going to go to my Step 3, A New Group. And in the, on the two images, I'll go ahead and drop those opacities down to about 70%. And I'll also add behind the last image. I'm going to press the Command key while I press Make a New Layer icon and that will give me a layer behind the layer I was currently on and then I'll press command delete to fill it with my background color which in this case was white. So that just gives me a white background which will make my images look a little more washed out. 
and I'm going to go ahead on my images. Let's see. I'll just start with, doesn't really matter which one I start with. I think I'll start with the Beach Runner. I'll start with Beach Runner. I'll go with my crop area. And I actually don't even need the highlight on it in this case. So I'll just hold the Command key while I select those two items. And I'll move them. I'm just going to move using the Move tool towards the top of the page. Um, I also did not have the outer glow on for step three. So this is basically what my image should look like. And I'll just make a big selection that covers more or less the size of the image in the crop guides. Um, and then on just my beach runner layer, I will add a layer mask so that now I have some free space for graduation layer to exist. And with my graduation layer there, I'm just going to take a, a duplicate of my crop area. So again, drag that to create a new layer. And with my move tool, I hold the command key to access my move tool. Hold shift as I move it straight, straight, straight down the page. Now notice that it's I didn't allocate for just the right amount of space here. Um, so I could, you know, make some adjustments. The easiest way, or the way that I'm going to do this right now in the moment, is with my direct selection tool. So on this layer, I'm just going to click and drag a big marquee over all of this top area. And then I'll just hold the shift key as I press the down arrow key. And then once I've once I've sort of went too far, I'll use up arrow until I get that right, just nudge that right into place. So that takes care of putting my images kind of stacked in the way that I wanted to see them. Now the next thing that I need to do, and let me just double check by looking and reviewing step three again. Okay, so, you know, I'm close enough. I'm a little tiny bit off, but it's close enough. Um, I would like to now... Um, you know, position my photos and add the, add, you know, make sure this is up a little higher, make sure that this is going to say save. Um, I'm now noticing that perhaps I actually need that yellow tone on my top layer. Didn't really think that it was there before. Um, so maybe I'll add that back again. And then I need this, this blend icon. Maybe the most important thing. Everything else you probably can figure out because you've already been, been doing this, uh, the same kind of work. So I might go back again and turn that highlight on and just move that into position. Uh, I also will um, turn that down a little bit, right? Nudge down the opacity on that. Um, maybe take care of the easy stuff first. So make, double click the T, make become save. That's simple enough. Now the part of step three that is the most different is of course the extra icon for blend. So for that you'll continue to work with your shape tools and we'll choose an ellipse tool which I'll hold the shift key as I click and drag and I will um, make a circle. Now notice my, my smart guides are on and so it shows me my width and height are 0.152 inches and I'm just going to command Z to undo that. If I change my ruler, if I um, in this case, I will go ahead right on my ruler and I will um, hold down, I'm sorry, I hold down the control key as I click on my ruler on my Mac. Um, and that will allow me to change my units from inches to pixels. So now if I click and drag with my ellipse tool, I can see how many pixels um, the shape is. So for instance, if I know I want to make a 20 pixel ellipse, I can go ahead and do that. The other thing is I want to make sure that my fill and stroke are set. I can always change them afterwards, but it's kind of nice to see what I have as I'm as I'm drawing. So I'm going to go ahead and just click and drag again with those set properly. So there's my ellipse, and I'm just going to name this blend ellipse, or actually blend circles, probably a little bit more accurate. And then I'll make my dashed line. Same thing. I'm using my shapes, so my line tool, which is in that shape uh, bundle of shape tools. I just click and drag. I'm holding the shift key to make a straight line. Um, this time I'm actually, I'll do it after the fact. I'm going to use no fill, but I will use a stroke. I'll leave my settings at three points, that's fine, but my line um, options here will be dashed rather than a solid line. And clicking off uh, of the layer helps you to see what's going on. I'll go ahead and take save and duplicate that. And with my move tool, move that down. 
I'm going to press Command T to free transform, and then click and drag while holding the Shift key to transform it 90 degrees. Apply that transformation, zoom back in, and I'll double click right on the words, in this case, save copy. And I want this to say blend, so I'm going to go ahead and type in blend. Now I'm noticing as I'm looking at it that I might need to do a little tiny bit of kerning. So might as well take care of that while I'm here. And I'll basically more or less nudge that into place. I'm going to put that up here just because I like to have my layers sort of grouped in a way that makes sense. And behind blend, I'm going to need a yellow rectangle. So I'm going to go behind blend in my stacking order. And I'm just going to click and drag to draw what's hopefully going to be a yellow rectangle. And instead I get no fill, so I'm going to change that to fill with no stroke. And since there's no stroke, it doesn't matter what kind of line is or isn't there. And that looks pretty good. I could slightly modify, which I will, where this is coming from. So I'm going to just push it down a little tiny bit, and I'll zoom out. Now I could take the word blend and move it down a little bit. And if I do that, then I might want to also decrease the size or the width of my rectangle. So I might go to my rectangle, which I should call my blend rectangle. And I'll use my direct selection tool because this is a shape after all, not pixels. And I'll select these two corners using the shift key. And this time I'm pressing the right arrow to nudge or resize um, that rectangle. So there's my step three. Um, and now I'm ready to move on to the final step.